Rainer Knitscher is my favourite board game designer, so of course I wanted to get my hands on my city. But you know what? While it was one of my most anticipated games of all time, I was also mildly sceptical about the whole thing. It's legacy, and that's kind of what worried me. Also, this review will mostly be spoiler free, mostly. It'll be vague at, at worst in that regard. So for context, and to be clear, I never played a legacy game all the way through. I'm still not all the way through my city. I'm most of the way through. I'm a, so I'm, I'm comfortable talking about it. I played like three games of Pandemic Legacy Season 1, if that makes a difference to anything. But I love Reiner Knizia, I love tile placement, and I'll tell you right now, I'm absolutely in love with my city. In my humble opinion, <laughs> For anyone that cares, it's incredible. So the whole idea is that you're playing a series of episodes that are grouped together into chapters. Each episode, there will be something new. New tiles, new ways to score, new stuff. And each game you play is slightly altered, slightly complicated, and that's awesome. At the start of the game, you have your tiles, and each turn, a card is flipped over that corresponds to a tile. Everyone has to place that tile down in their city. Tiles have to start connected to the river and then they have to be orthogonally adjacent as they spread across the map. You don't want to cover trees because they are points at the end of the round and you do want to cover rocks because they are minus points. But then all of a sudden all those rules still apply but then you get points for connected sets of buildings of the same colour as well as everything else. Then you get other things that you want to do or not to do to score points and it slowly evolves from game to game but each game is quick technically it's 24 different episodes but it's defined it's designed with the idea in mind i think that you'll probably play about three games in a row and do a whole chapter and while that sounds repetitive it just isn't the little changes are great and it's, they're interesting challenges and it's just really good. And each of these episodes, are the chapters are in an envelope. And when you get to a new chapter, you get to open an envelope. And in that envelope, there's a bunch of stuff. And I tell you, it draws you in and you want to keep on playing. Each game of this is about half an hour. So you might play the whole legacy campaign over the course of eight sessions of playing the game but the, the words do you want to play one more will crop up over and over again so the legacy part of this game as well is that your board will be forever changed i can't go into too much detail but needless to say you will be putting stickers down on your board based on how well you did in the last episode if you did great you'll most likely get a hindrance if you did terrible you'll most likely get a bonus it's in part it's a catch-up mechanism but you still want to win because you score points for winning and from round to round that are forever marked on your board as well and you want to be the winner of the whole campaign one thing i found is that you always are trying to desperately be the best <laughs> you desperately want to have a perfect game to get the most points but you don't need to win the whole you don't need to win the whole game each episode and be the best possible. You just need to beat everyone else. And that's what you should keep in mind, I feel like, to eliminate some of the analysis paralysis that might come in with the game. So you, you might be trying to do the absolute perfect, but if you know you're way ahead of the person you're playing with, you don't necessarily need to be perfect. But it is very satisfying to be perfect and also nigh on impossible let's face it you also might just want to take the l on one game because you just think that the bonus for losing that round is too good to pass up and i've seen games of this actually which have devolved into everyone trying to lose which is fascinating it's much more uncommon it's not going to happen very often it's much more uncommon but it could happen there's an eternal game on the back of the board so when the campaign is done you can still play the game when it's over and i mean 
really play the game. It's not some weird thing you can technically play, but you probably shouldn't. You can play, and it's great. But I can honestly, and I really mean this, honestly, I can see myself going through the whole campaign and then buying another copy, just so that I have the option to go through the whole thing again, start to finish. And that's kind of high praise, I feel, for a game like this. I probably would want to go through with new people, but I could see doing that with the same group of people. And that last time you say one more, we are talking about one more go through the whole campaign. It's just that good. I love Reiner Knizia, so I was probably always going to like this game. Right, but I guess that's not always true for all Reiner Knizia games, let's be honest. But this, in my opinion, for the games that I like, tile placement being my favourite mechanism of all time. I absolutely love it. It's super easy to teach, it's fast, it's fun, it's easy to play, but it's rich in excitement, replayability, strategy and satisfaction. For me, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 game as far as I'm concerned, and I love it. If you like it, then please do let me know below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.